I wanted to start from actually something that is unrelated to any of these projects, which is um, a research that began uh, just over a year ago um, that was done with um, my studio in Genova, which is called uh, Space Caviar. Um, and so when I say we from now on, it's um, uh, myself and Andrea, uh, well, Tamar, Andrea, Martina, Simone, um, a group of uh, really amazing people from, uh, I think, six different countries who work together in Genova. Uh, not all architects, mainly um, architects, maybe three, uh, but also um, graphic designers and artists. Um, and uh, the, the, the project I wanted to talk to you about today, um, in a way, this is the culmination. This idea of architecture for life on the electromagnetic spectrum is the point of arrival. It's not actually where we started from. Um, the point of departure uh, was... Um, I actually have the wrong slide there. Uh, was the invitation that came uh, about uh, a couple of years ago, a year and a half ago, from Biennale Interieur in uh, Belgium, uh, which is based in the city of Kortrijk in Belgium, uh, which is a, uh, it's not so well known maybe in many circles, maybe it's better known here in Milan because it's actually one of the main biennials of um, interior design in Europe or, or interiors. Uh, in a way, I think it's, um, you could really think of it as a sort of Salon de Mobile for um, northern central Europe. Um, and it's, um, it, I think one of the things that's not really so well known about it is that it was actually the second uh, biennial of design um, in Europe after uh, Bio in Ljubljana, uh, which actually began just two years before. But in 1968, Interior launched um, in Kortrijk with uh, and what, what I think is really an incredible mission. Um, and uh, this to me is, this is something that really came out of, uh, uh, that was discovered because at the beginning I really didn't know of this and I'm sure that, I'm pretty certain that most of you, if any of you have heard of Interior, it's more from this sort of uh, identity as a, a northern salone, as a showroom for recent designs or perhaps um, experimental designs certainly, but um, uh, certainly not as one of the oldest platforms for actually interrogating what design is in Europe. Uh, but that was actually how it began. In 1968, was, um, it, it, it really launched with an incredible uh, sense of euphoria, optimism, and maybe even, you could almost say, euphoria, um, into the European stage. And, and it was like looking at certain um, images from the um, archive, uh, maybe um, uh, some of the, uh, this is one of them, uh, you could really see it, it uh, at Mendini, Ponti, um, uh, Gillo Dorfles, a lot of the Milanese design scene were invi invited there early on as guests of honor. And it really kind of tapped into this moment in history where design was perceived as a truly transformative force. Um, I'm speaking of design of the home, like the, the, the interiors, the kind of uh, uh, literally furniture, was not simply something, um, a question of decoration, but it was actually a question that, had, that was considered to have the power to deeply transform society. And the, 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 this idea of uh, design or industrial design as a vehicle of social justice, uh, or, of, or certainly of so tr social transformation, maybe more accurately put, this idea that uh, design needed to be dragged into, it to, in, in order to fully realize the, the modernist project, design had to be dragged into the living room of the bourgeoisie of, uh, of Central Europe. Uh, was really um, apparent in these, um, uh, in the photographs from the archive. And it was, uh, therefore, the, the conclusion that we arrived at is that was it was actually an incredibly ideological project. And in that sense, it was much more similar to the kind of uh, things that were being done in Italy at that moment of the radical architects uh, and so on. And so this be kind of became an incredible, um, uh, th this is where we really began to get excited about the idea of collaborating with Interior on a major research project that could actually look at this question of what is the role of the home in shaping who we are. Uh, interior was always very much very specifically about the home, the idea of the relationship between design, interior design, furniture design, industrial design, and, the, uh, and culture. Uh, it was really one of the few platforms in Europe, I think, that actively understood the role of industrial design as a form of cultural practice, not simply um, the, the, the idea of making a su successful new business where you would launch a sofa or a chair or something that would become incredibly successful and sell millions of um, uh, units, but something that could actually, that actually had the, the power to reshape 
that to implement the social ambitions of the modern project. And uh, I think it's interesting to reflect also on the very specific moment in which this took place. Uh, this was, um, 1968 was a moment of incredible inflection um, in which the context, uh, of course, in the context full-blown context of the Cold War, um, in which there was uh, massive tension, mas massive rivalry between the East and the West, um, often around this very question, around what actually is the, uh, the kind of the political um, and social uh, message that is being conveyed by the way that we inhabit our homes. And this is um, a photograph of uh, Khrushchev and Nix Nixon in conversation uh, during this kind of um, cultural exchange, so it's a, a socio-political exchange that came to be known as the kitchen debate. Um, and the, the, what, what, what's kind of incredibly interesting about this very specific moment, um, and the, the one of the things that kind of became the core of our research, was that 1968 was actually an incredibly important year, uh, which is something, of course, we already knew, but that actually it was an incredibly important year in almost every field. Um, that was the thing that, uh, uh, that fascinated us, and specifically in relation to the home. Uh, 1968 was um, the year, for example, in which a, uh, or towards the kind of end, it's, it's impossible to give an exact year, but one must consider that from the end of the Second World War, from 1945 on, in Western economies, a, uh, the boom took place. There was a kind of a, a moment, a, a period of over two decades of uninterrupted growth. And so there was this kind of line um, that was rising towards, uh, uh, if you take the kind of the, the wealth of an, a, a typical family of any class, of working class, of middle class, um, the, 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 the line of growth of its wealth was con constant. It was year upon year, one could re reliably predict that the following year one would actually be richer. And what happened in 1960, and, and so we, we, we actually kind of projected this line um, onwards beyond 1968, like this, this kind of constant growth of a few percent every year. And what's interesting is that if that growth had continued uninterrupted until this day, uh, a, a, an average um, um, uh, laborer would be earning over 200, somewhere, somewhere between 200 and $300,000 a year. So you have to imagine the kind of the, the, the culture of incredible optimism that characterized this moment. But in 1968 or around 1970, this was the first moment in which this uh, growth came into crisis, in which for the first time the um, uncertainty around the first kind of um, hints of what was later to come, the oil crisis, which um, was really kind of when there was a deep moment of inflection, but also a questioning of the um, capitalist model, uh, of what the actual significance of this growth was that actually then led, um, was uh, one of the kind of um, f fields of research that was expressed through uh, the collages of Super Studio, for example. What were the uh, deeper implications of this? Um, and at the same time, in a, a little bit later on, towards the middle of the 1970s, um, this, uh, this idea of the, um, the, the, that there was kind of a convergence between um, a need to actually kind of reestablish a connection between the lives of the individuals which had, uh, of, 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 of the regular family, of a normal family, that had somehow begun, begun th this model of perpetual growth, the idea that uh, a market of continuous expansion was actually cast into doubt, um, especially in the context of the oil crisis, is something that was immediately positioned within the context of the home. And so, for example, Jimmy Carter uh, speaking to Americans about the fact that they had to, for the first time, dial back on their oil consumption and turn off their heating uh, was something that was, uh, that, that, that was actually the beginning of a whole new um, role of the home in terms of political messaging, the fact that he was actually sitting in front of a fireplace that was not on, wearing a cardigan to keep himself warm, uh, was a moment in which the home, actually the idea, the notion, the collective idea of what the home actually represented became a political instrument. And of course in Italy, um, I don't know how many of you are Italian, but um, this is something that Berlusconi, of course, um, almost 40 years later deployed extremely effectively, alas, um, in his own messaging of presenting himself uh, in his own uh, family home. And so all of this, uh, so we, at that point, that's the point when we decided that this was actually an incredibly interesting, uh, there was a lot more um, that could be got out of the subject. Why don't we actually look at the home as a way of uh, understanding how, or, or rather look at, the, take the home as a subject of something that is 
not necessarily um, the same uh, uh, uguala cistis or something that's not necessarily con uh, a constant, a historical constant, but something that actually is possibly has possibly been radically transformed. Our understanding of a home as a generation, or a, a lot of you who are even longer, younger, um, your understanding of a home is probably almost incomparable to that of uh, what uh, the home as a notion, as a concept, um, or as a construct represented for, for your grandparents.